Afternoon, everyone. How are you? Good? How's the summit so far? Enjoying? Good stuff. Guys, uh, my name is Fabio Braga. I'm a cloud solution architect. I'm an Azure cloud solution architect, but I'm also a big Power BI fan. And that's why I'm here today, actually, uh, to come and talk to you guys about delivering uh, powerful data stories with Power BI, right? Uh, this is going to be a little bit back to front. We're going to start with a demo, right, straight away. And behind, before I jump on the demo, let's just give you a bit of some context of what, about what you're going to see here. Any Game of Thrones fans in the audience? Are you all caught up with season eight? No? Oh, OK. OK. I have to be careful then, because my demo is about actually Game of Thrones. Um, and how the, the, the story I, as to how I actually build this report is quite interesting. Uh, I was in a complete situation uh, in one of my accounts, and I found out that the customer was also a Game of Thrones fan. And in a complete situation against the other visualization tool, one of the criteria that would decide which platform would win is the variety of visuals available for the platform. Right? So and having enough visuals that could meet your uh, requirements, uh, depending on what they are. Right? So I kind of built this Game of Thrones um, Power BI report. And, and of course, that with every Game of Thrones experience, it needs to start with Makes sense, right? It has to start that way, right? And then um, I started collecting a whole bunch of data about Game of Thrones, right? So, so you guys have no idea how many data sets are there available <laughs> for Game of Thrones. Yeah, actually, this is quite a lot, right? So I started collecting all of this data from different places uh, to build this report. So I got all the data here up, updated. It was for season eight, right? So budget. Uh, characters. Death count is a bit outdated. I haven't finished counting season eight yet. There was a lot. For the guys that haven't, haven't watched yet, a lot of people die, right? <laughs> but um, what, interesting things here, right? Interesting insights about the Game of Thrones, right? So you can see uh, that the audience actually keeps growing up year after year, season after season. And what I have in the, in the lines here is actually the rating of each episode. And that shows that Game of Thrones is a bit, it's a bit of a ramp up at the end of each season, right? It starts kind of, yeah, OK. And then the final three episodes, kind of, holy. That's uh, that thing. Except for season eight. Season eight, people did not, <laughs> did not like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I've got uh, top five episodes based on score, kind of death causes, and if popular characters, and I built um, a comprehensive uh, visualization around the, the different seasons and the episodes of what you can do, right? So uh, if I go back to season one here, uh, come on, help me. I'm right in the middle of the demo. Don't fail me. It's coming. It's spinning. Sorry, say again? Yes, I did. I did. And that was one of the main reasons. What, what, actually, what got uh, hearts and minds was actually uh, the ability to connect with the, the audience, with the customer. The customer was, was a big fan of Game of Thrones, so I kind of put two things together. I've connected with the audience, and I showed the richness of visuals that are available in Power BI. And they were like, yep, yeah, that's it. Right? So I won. Thank you. Thanks for asking. But anyway, uh, you can use these visuals, for example, to display all information about the episodes and the dates, right? So it's quite, it's quite powerful in, in terms of what you can do uh, with these guys. They were kind of description of the episodes. Uh, I got information about each one of the houses, right? So the House Baratheon. There's a, the motto of, the, of each house and description, right? So the, that was supposed to update, but it's super slow. Right? But trust me, it does. Right? <laughs> Let me keep going here. 
uh, I got information about characters, right? So all the characters of the show, uh, what house they belong, what kind of relationships they have with each other, right? Come on. Wi-Fi is not helping me today. There you go. Yeah. So if I, if I have a look, let's say, Arya Stark. If I click here, let's see what. So who is Arya Stark and who is the actress who plays that? The house she belongs to and the relationships that she's got. That bubble chart is also supposed to update in a minute, showing that all the relationships between Arya and the other characters, who are the parents, brothers, sisters, people she killed, right? So that's, that's supposed to show up in the bubble chart right there. Still spinning. Yeah, there you go. Took a while, but shut up. It's pretty cool, right? Enjoying that so far? No spoilers. No spoilers. I'm trying my best here, right? Spoilers will come in the next tab over there. <laughs> so I've collected that. Uh, death statistics, right? So how many people died all, all the way up to season six? That's how far I actually got data sets uh, about how people die in Game of Thrones. The season eight is just impossible. If someone dies by the White Walkers and they come back, if they die again, should I count once or twice? Don't know, right? But anyway, so that about death in, in Game of Thrones actually tells me that Cersei Lannister was the, the, the character that killed a lot of people. You guys remember why? She blew up the church, right? Remember? Yeah, that, that, counts, that counts by a lot, right? Yeah, but I have all the information in terms of the, the method and kind of, let you go, fire burning, so I say, right? And even characters that don't um, kill a lot of people, uh, let's say here, um, Sansa Stark, one death for Sansa. But that was a very satisfying one, right? Do you agree with me? That was a good one. But anyway, during season eight, I did something different. I started collecting tweets during the episodes. So I'm a, I'm a cloud solution architect in Azure, so I kind of a beautiful solution to capture all the tweets that happened during the episode. And then I, I started <clears throat> collecting all of them, and then applied sentiment analysis on top of them. And I linked the average sentiment for every minute of the episode, I've correlated that to things that happened during the episode, right? So for example, I've got this visual here that's called Pulse. So for the first episode, that's the first episode of season eight, guys. So if you haven't seen it yet, just look that way there. Um, if I click play here, you see that, okay, I started collecting 10 minutes before, so episode starts here, right? And then, as the episode progresses, you see that the, the sentiment, the average sentiment kind of varies a little bit. And then something happens here. Okay, I'm not gonna say it. If, if you can't read, that's fine. And then something else happens, right? So the same, this very same chart I'm using here to correlate sentiment analysis with tweets can also be used for you guys to explain why stock options actually go up and down and something happened here or company A broke this point and whatever that is, right? So that is something that I built for, for, for season eight. I'm not going to show us the rest of the, of the episodes because not to spoil the experience for the rest of the guys. But that was the report that I used in one of my accounts. And I was successful. And I was successful winning uh, that account uh, over the competitor for a, a very interesting reason, right? Oops. I was able to tell a story. Right? So we, if you're not able to tell a story, you just have data, which is kind of a bunch of collection of numbers, until you turn into a story. How do you do that? First, understand your data. Data speaks, right? It, sometimes data screens for certain types of visuals, right? So for example, in this case, my data set was Game of Thrones. So of course it had to be very visual, very graphical with pictures with uh, sentiment analysis and then context to the audience, right? So 
that is the kind of experience that you want to have to your customers. Is you understand the data, understand the audience. I knew the customer was a big Game of Thrones fan themselves. So I knew exactly what he, he would like to see. Right? And then select what data is important, know your audience, and keep it simple. Right? I know, I, I've seen a lot of dashboards out there with kind of very, um, with a lot of visuals on, on, on a page that got quite confusing. You try to say multiple messages on the same page. Try to break it down a little bit. Right? So just a, kind of a clear example of how uh, important your choice of visuals are. Right? So I have the exact same data set being displayed in two different ways, where one is just a table with a bunch of numbers. But here, you can see that the highest education level has the lowest unemployment rate and the highest uh, earnings. Right? So you can see based on the ranking, if you go all the way down, you can see quite the opposite. So by visually looking at the data, you can actually get this message. So the idea of ranking, the idea of comparison. Right? Make sense? And the thing is, you have to choose wisely, right? You have to understand that certain visuals, they convey specific messages, right? So if you're trying to display, uh, convey the message of change over time, we're not going to use a pie chart for that, right? So maybe a bar chart, maybe a line chart, but not a pie chart, right? And with Power BI, of course, there's a lot of visuals out there, right? To help you with your choice of visuals, it would be good for you to understand exactly what kind of message each one of these visuals tries to convey, right? This uh, um, screen that you guys see here was based on this document. So the Financial Times, right? They've published this vocabulary, this visual vocabulary. It's a PDF, right? It's a PDF that you guys can download. It's, it's available from this URL here, where it classifies, for example, all of these different visuals based on the message they try to convey, right? And there was one very good member of the, of the Power BI community that, I'm sorry, guys, I'll, I'll get back to it, that implemented the the Financial Times vocabulary with Power BI. So they got the same concept of, of the PDF. Now we have an interactive report. You can say, hey, if I want to convey the message of distribution, right? if I click here, come on, I've clicked. Uh, not loading. My, I think my Wi-Fi is still on. Let me check. It should still on. Okay, let's try something else here. So if we just go, to, go page by page here, so if I look at the deviation, you see there's a number of charts that convey the message of deviation. The same for changes over time, the same, same for parts to a whole. Right? That's a resource for you, for example, that can help you decide what visual to use based on the message that you want to convey, right? So this, the link to this report is actually in a references slide that you see at the end of the presentation, right? <clears throat> so choose wisely. There's a lot of options out there, right? <coughs> Sorry. And of course, you guys know about the, the marketplace for Power BI, right? So who's using custom visuals for Power BI? Who did not know that custom visuals actually existed? OK, there you go. So when you, when you start a Power BI report, so the first time, Power BI Desktop comes with a specific set of visuals right, loaded by default. But that's just the beginning. You don't need to be constrained by that amount of visuals there. You can always go to your toolbar and say, hey, I want more visuals. And then you import from the marketplace, and you see a very long list of very good visuals that you can use. One of them will meet your requirements. Right? It's very likely that one of the visuals that have been published in the marketplace will meet your requirements. And if that suits the message you're trying to convey, import your report and start using it. Right? So the marketplace actually is it's a good opportunity for both report developers because 
you have more options, but also for visual authors. Because you can all pub you can, you can publish your visual that you've de developed uh, to the marketplace. And just recently, we introduced the ability to charge uh, for visuals, right? So if you, if, you, if you are a member of an ISV, for example, that develops visuals for Power BI, you can publish to the marketplace. And then you can, you can choose if your vision is going to be free for everyone or if it, if it requires a, a license purchase. Make sense? If, for some reason, you don't find what you want in the marketplace, you still have another option. You can build your own. Right? So if you have software development skills, you can use the Power BI Visual Development Center and for the, I'm not sure if you guys got this, uh, the, the session from James uh, this morning where he was building rockets. Who was there? That was pretty cool, right? So yeah, so you can build your own visual, right? So if you missed the session, just make sure you watch the recording later, right? That's the session code. Uh, you can also use Charticulator, which is a tool by Microsoft Research that you can uh, import a kind of a sample data set and build some custom visuals. Right? Let me kind of show you what that looks like. So Charticulator is this tool here. So if I go to the gallery, it shows a whole bunch of kind of crazy, awesome looking uh, visuals that you can uh, build yourself. Right? If you click one of these visuals, for example, let's click uh, this guy here. Uh, there is, a, there is a video of the process on how you can do that, right? So how you create these kind of custom visuals with a bit of a tutorial for you to understand. So once you finish building your visual, you can export that as a Power BI visualization, and you can then import to your Power BI report. Sorry? No, that's not going to be certified, no. You, you port a Power BI visualization that you can import. Yeah, you can, you can deploy the visual to your uh, organization uh, marketplace. And then finally, guys, these are the links of all the resources that I showed you today. So if you want to play with the Game of Thrones Power BI report, uh, that's the link. Uh, the Financial Times visual vocabulary is there. The Power BI edition of, of the vocabulary. Uh, that's a very interesting ebook that gives you some hot tips in terms of how you should think about building your report in a way that connects to your audience. Highly recommend that. Right? And the links to the Visual Development Center in the Chatriculator. Right? So guys, please take some time to uh, rate the session. I really hope you guys really enjoyed some of the Game of Thrones. Kind of, it was a bit of fun, right, I guess. Uh, any questions? No, I'm good. Oh, there you go. So I cannot take this offline because we're just one minute away. I'll, I'll take your question in a minute, right? So guys, thank you very much.